I think Shane's trying to box Margarito. He's the best fighter out there. He's got a title. I think it'll be a great fight for Shane. Um, you know, and I think monetarily it'll be a great fight also. I mean, you know, for him also that way. So, uh, and I think that's what he's trying, who's trying to fight, Margarito. Margarito. Right. Okay. And, uh, you know, there was even uh, some talk about January, a matchup between them. Could there be any truth behind that or? Well, I don't know. I mean, I've heard that too, but uh, I've heard from Shane that it's possibly another date mm -hmm. instead of January. Uh, so I don't know right now. I'm just, I'm just waiting for them to tell me when the date is. Yeah, and then we got to make a rule clear is that you strictly just train Shane. You're not yeah, I'm just training him. Shane, nothing yeah. else. I'm not involved with anything else. I just train him and that's it. Right. Okay, well, my next question would be the obvious about Andre Berto or Joshua Kalati. If you were managing him, who would you want to put Shane up against if he wasn't able to get a shot at Margarito? Uh, I think it would make more sense to fight Andre, I mean not Andre, but uh, Joshua Clyde. Mm -hmm. um, he has nothing to gain to fight Andre Berto at this point. Uh, but Joshua Clyde, I think, would be a better uh, matchup style-wise than everything else for mm -hmm. Shane. For Shane, just because of height-wise and or because yeah. Kalati comes forward? Well, I don't, you know, style-wise, I mean, Shane is um, probably looking at himself, maybe, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but it just makes sense to fight Joshua Clotty. Um, then we'll, you know, after that, fight somebody else uh, before we get to Andre Berto, you know. Uh, he still has a lot to prove out there. He's a champion, but still uh, has some ground to cover, you know. And right. Shane's up in age, and he's not, you don't have to try to prove anything. He's mm -hmm. trying to, right now, uh, in my opinion, uh, fight the tough, not tough fights, but fight the, the big fights, the money fights, uh, that would bring him, you know, financial stability. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. What are your thoughts about Paul Williams and even the fact that they're calling him the most feared man in the 147 division? I think he needs to move up to 160. He's just too big for 147 to be fighting these little bitty guys. <laughs> he needs to move on up to 147. I mean, 150 or 4, 160 or something. Mm -hmm. He's tall enough and long enough where that'll probably be better for him. He's already won a title at 147. So just go and get you one in 154, go to 160, and then 65, and then 175, and become a historical guy like Roy Jones or Thomas Hearns or those guys, because mm -hmm. they're big and tall enough to do that. Okay, so that whole assessment of them saying that he's the most feared man at 147, would you have to say that's 
true or? Well, no, I don't think everybody in the 147 pound division fear him, mm -hmm. but he's too big right. to fight people, too small, right. in my opinion. Right. You know, so they're not scared of him, but you know, you don't have to be scared of somebody to know that somebody's too big for you. See what I'm saying? No, I hear that. don't make you scared. You just, they're just too big. <laughs> okay. Um, it's like Bernard Hopkins fighting Mor um, Eric Morales. He'll fight him, but he know he's too big for him. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so definitely. don't make sense. He'll be fighting for money, and that's all. Now, you think, uh, I mean, at 160, you really think about Paul Williams moving up. He did fight at 160, fight Andy Cole, knocked him out in the first round, right? Yeah. Okay. But even him testing at 160, there's some pretty good tough guys out there to prove himself against. Oh, and yeah. He's already proven at 147 he could have been an elite fighter. Right. Even if he can make that way, I've said it, and I think a lot of people said it, even though you can make 160, do you necessarily think he could be good at 160? I think he can. Yeah. Yeah. I think he can. I think because one reason is he can hold the weight. It won't affect him. But yeah, he'll be challenged a lot more at 160 than he would at 147. See, so yeah. that in itself would prove your worth as a fighter. If you're going to be a, a elite, I mean, a Hall of Famer or what, you know what I mean? This would prove you to be a Hall of Famer type fighter. Right. So that's what you want to do. You know, you want to test the waters in every weight class. So you'll, it'll prove your greatness, solidify your greatness. And that's what you're looking for in the boxing world besides money. It's greatness. And this will solidify your greatness. You already did it with 47, do it at 54, do it at 160, do it at 69 or 68, whatever you fight at. Then you do it at 75, you're tall enough to fight heavyweight or uh, small heavyweight, uh, cruiserweight. You can do all of that with your height, your weight, your reach and everything. Most definitely. So now, you'll be one of the greatest fighters of all times. One of them. Right. Not, all, not the, but one of the greatest fighters of all times. Now, you know Shane better than anybody else. If Shane can fight him tomorrow, you think he'll do it? Fight who? Paul Williams. If he can fight him tomorrow? Yeah. Shane's not scared of Paul Williams. Right. Yeah, he would fight him. But as a trainer, uh -huh. I have to look at things like that, not Shane. Okay. You know what I mean? That's a fly. fly. <laughs> <laughs> That's fly. So as a trainer, would you put him in there with Paul Williams? As a trainer, I would think uh, it wouldn't make sense for Shane to fight him. He'll have nothing to gain to fight with Paul Williams, so I wouldn't put him in there. Okay. How about Miguel Cotto again? Yeah, we fight Miguel Cotto again. And has there been any call-outs about that, or has Miguel okay. Cotto even showed interest after losing to Margarito? Uh, not that I've heard of, mm -hmm. but we want to fight him again. We want to fight Margarito, Cotto, uh, Plata, you know. All right, let's get down to the good. Fight sense for Shane. What do we got here? Uh, let's we're explain to it. And how okay. can a, a, an amateur fighter, even a pro fighter, can they use this? Okay, first of all, Max GXL is for someone who's 20, who's past 20 puts glutathione back into your body. After 20 years old, your body stops making glutathione. Okay, so Max GXL is one of these products that Dr. Keller has uh, not invented, but he had created a way, a solution where the uh, pills or the products can go into your system. The glutathione can go into your system, every cell of your body, and put you back into your 20s, give you the coping powers that you need as a unique athlete, so all the elite athletes need to use this because that recovery power you need, whether you're running track, playing football, whether you're boxing, baseball, you need that recuperative power after you exert so much energy. Like a track star, say a track star runs that 100 yard dash, uh, he needs to recoup, right? Right, definitely. The glutathione make him recoup uh, uh, really quick. It's like he's in his 20s. If he's 30 years old, 40 years old, it'd be like you're in your 20s. That's what glutathione does. And this is actually a product that you're using yourself right now. I use it right now. I can feel the difference. <laughs> and Max Infuse, you can feel it right away the same day. Glutathione takes up to three to six months, but it's still working. You see, because the glutathione that you have left in your body after age 20, because your body's not making glutathione any, any longer, whatever you have left, your body just uses that. Feel, because see, like I said, once you pass 20s. Once you get to 20, your body, I'm told, stops making glutathione, mm -hmm. and whatever's left, you, your body just uses that until whatever age you, you know you are, and it goes away. Uh, but with this product, it puts it back into your body, mm -hmm. so you still get that 
feel of the 20 year old or uh, 30 year old speak, it is. And I, I use monopy. And I still take a little monopy right now. But this here, you feel that right away. That's I even gave part, you a yeah. taste of it. How do you feel about it? Oh man, I feel great. Actually, okay. you know, uh, I'm still pumped. I'm ready to get in the ring, you know? That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. This is a dream match right here between me and Jack, you know? <laughs> so you felt it right away, folks. <laughs> Great stuff here. This stuff, like I say, takes a little longer, but put you back in your 20s, in your 30s. Remember, this is a, this is a product that you got to be cleaning up in order to try.